Master Data Synchronization in Business Central allows you to nominate one database as being the owner of all of your master data records. You can then link other databases to this master database and then any changes you make to master records is done in the master database and automatically replicates through. Let's have a look at how this works. I'm in the company Fabcon3 in my environment and if we look at the companies I've got set up, I've got this grouping of companies that are used for consolidation. So my Fabcon master is going to be my master database and then I'm replicating them into Fabcon1, 2 and 3. I've already set up Fabcon 1 and 2, but I've yet to set up Fabcon 3, so let's take a look. Before we set up the jobs, let's have a look at the chart of accounts. So if we focus on, on this cash area, you can see I've got a check account, a call account, USD, AUD, and some of these names will be different when we've completed. To set this up, we're going to do a search for master data management. We're going to select the source company that we want to use. We're going to use Fabcon Master and enable the synchronization. We're going to come into the synchronization tables and you get this message to tell you the steps that you need to do to set this up. So we want to review the tables and the synchronization tables that we're doing, perform the initial synchronization to set up the jobs. And then after the initial synchronization, you can then um, update jobs as needed. So for today's video, I'm just going to focus on the GL account table. So I'm going to change all of these to disabled. When you first change it, you might get a message come up about dates. Just do a refresh and it updates with uh, the date and time that you set this up. And then you can work your way through on disable. I'm just going to use my handy F8 down the page. Another thing we can do in here, so now we've just got the GL account enabled. If we go into the fields area, we can then toggle on and off fields that we might want to uh, migrate across. So for example, if you're using this across multiple databases, you may not need the same global dimensions in one as in another. So those are good fields to disable. And you would review and disable additional fields as appropriate. The other thing you may want to do is to enable filters as to which accounts you bring across. So if your master holds a chart of accounts for companies with different business operations, there may be some companies that don't need specific ranges of accounts. So you can filter those out in this area here. For the initial synchronization, we're going to come up to this, the three dots menu and come down to our actions, and we're going to do match-based coupling. And this is so we get any uh, changes to the existing chart of accounts in our master database across to the new company as a starting point. So make that selection, and it lets you know that it's going to um, run the process based on the matching you select. So yes, we want to continue, and then I get the option to say what I want to match on. A few different settings in here. So by default, it's going to match on the number field. You may have other matches that you want to uh, consider as well. With the settings up the top, the synchronize after coupling, that means it's just going to run immediately. And if it can't find a matching one, if an account exists in the master that doesn't exist in our database, what to do. And so it will create a new record. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And it lets you know that you can see the details and in the integration synchronization jobs. So if I go over to that page, we can see that it's running or it's run because it happens very, very quickly, that it's run the process and there are 185 records now in the GL accounts that have been modified. Let's go and take a look at those. Right, so you can see now that we've got multiple different uh, bank accounts that we didn't have before and some of these names have changed. Let's see what's happened in the job queues area. What we see in the job queue entries is we've got a whole pile of jobs now that start with the MDM for Master Data Management. 
all of them are on hold with the exception of the GL account. And that's because we mark those as disabled. So the job is there ready to go if we want to enable any of those actions. The GL account one is set to on hold with an activity timeout. And that simply means it's a recurring job. So that will just go ahead and run on, on the schedule, which when we drill into it, we can see is every 30 minutes. You could update and change that period if you needed to. So what that means is if we then go back into our master database and make changes, every 30 minutes this job will run and it will look for changes since the last time it was run and update the databases accordingly. Master data management is great for organisations that have multiple company databases and want to use the same chart of accounts across all of them. If you're going to implement it in an already operational environment, just make sure that your master data is updated and correct in the template company first. If you like the videos, be sure to hit like and subscribe and ask for notifications for new videos.